Hi, I'm Dan from Localizy, and in this video, I'm going to present to you a set of cool features that will greatly improve the work experience of those of you who wish to use Figma as the source of truth for textual content. Using Figma as the source of truth assures that the designs accurately match production content your users work with every day. However, setting up such a workflow in a smooth manner for everyone, especially for the designers, translators, and developers, can be challenging. Our goal is to make this process as smooth as possible for everyone. So let's have a look how Localizy can help you with that. I have a, I have a design of a website here that, have, that has a very common layout. We have a header at the, at the top, a jumbo picture, a contact form, a, a subscription, a subscribe input to subscribe to newsletters, and a footer at the bottom. As a designer, I would ideally just want to upload this to a translation management platform, have it translated, and then make a use of it without any extra overhead such as such as having to rename individual uh, nodes, having to remember into which file I, sh I should upload it. No. Ideally, I just want to select what I want to upload. So in this case, I will upload this layout, for instance, and just upload it to a single place. This single place is going to be this Figma JSON file, and I'm going to upload it in a JSON format, which should upload 61 nodes for me. However, before we do that, let's, uh, let's have a second look at the design. We can see that we have some duplicates here. We have contact us here and here. And when, when we look at uh, the footer, you can see that block is here and block is also here. And there are more duplicates. To make it easier for the translators and also subsequently for the developers, it would be a good idea to somehow merge those duplicates so that we don't have to translate them and categorize, categorize them multiple times. We have a feature for this, which we call clustering. Uh, that we have to enable first before we upload anything to localize it. You can do that by navigating to settings, general settings, expanding the import and export section, and clicking here on enable key clustering. Save changes. Now, what happens is that all the duplicate values we will upload from Figma, such as this contact us label, is going to be aggregated into a single source key or also called string in localize. However, when we translate it and download it back to Figma, it will be again expanded into multiple places here and here, and the value will be accurately replaced. So have a look. let's have a look at how that works. So I'm going to hit Upload to Localize, and after a few moments, we should be able to see our content in Localize. You can see that only 55 strings have actually been uploaded from Figma, and it, that is because We've enabled the clustering feature, and you can see that it has created five clusters for us. One of them is also this contact us, and you can see that it only exists once in localize. However, when I expand it, you can see that actually multiple individual text nodes have been aggregated within it. As I said, this means that the duplicate values only need to be translated once and subsequently categorized once, which saves a lot of time and money for translators and developers alike. These Numerical IDs are IDs generated by Figma. You normally don't see them, but each of these actually represent a unique text node that you have uploaded from Figma, which allows us to identify which keys are aggregated within this cluster in Localize. Now, at this point, normally the translators would take over. However, to speed it up, uh, I will use machine engines to generate translations for me. Uh, let's take, for instance, uh, let's stick to Amazon, and I will approve all the translations, meaning that they will not go to review, and instead they will be approved immediately, and I will be able to make use of them immediately. Everything has been translated, so now back in Figma, what I can do is I can go to the download section, choose that single individual file, and th that this is the only file that's ever going to exist with this workflow, so there is no room for uh, mistakes thanks to that, and I will choose German as the target language. When we download that, you can see that the layout has troubles with German. That, that is quite common, since Germ German words are very long. Uh, you can see that everything has been translated. Now, it's far from perfect. Uh, machine translations are usually far from perfect, although it, it's good enough for testing purposes. But for instance, you can see that it has also translated our uh, logo or our uh, brand name, which is definitely something uh, I don't want to occur. So human translator wouldn't do such a mistake, but this is just for testing purposes. Now, the work for the designers has been concluded at this point for the translators as well, and it's time for developers to make use of the translations and of the content uploaded from Figma. 
To do that, we'll make a use of a second feature that's uh, vital for this workflow to work. Click on Edit Columns and enable Export Path column. Now, uh, by default, if I try to download it either via web interface or via CLI, which is the recommended way for development integration, I would download everything into the Figma JSON file that I've created in Figma and under the key name that has been generated by Figma. However, developers will agree that having everything in a single file is a bad pattern and you, working with keys such as this is not very clear because you would always need to look up, look at the value to understand how it's used and where it's used. So instead, let's create what we call export aliases. First, let's, go, let's create a export path alias for all the keys we've just uploaded. Click, select all of them and click on add new export path. Let's imagine that uh, I just uploaded a website that I, for, in, for this instance, I just want to call a little bit differently and what I want to use in, in a different format. So I will call this website.arp uh, and I will export that into locales folder. And since I'm renaming this to ARP, I also want to ch uh, change the format from JSON to Flutter ARP on export. Now, you can see that the alternative export path or an export alias has been created for all the keys, which means that at this point, all the keys I could export to this newly created folder and newly created file, which is already much better. However, I still have these uh, numerical IDs, which can be tricky to work with. So let's, at individual level, add uh, key aliases as well. So for instance, here we have home, so I could click on the manage export aliases, and for the newly created path alias, I will also create a key alias. This was home, so let's call it simple, simply home. Now, what, what has happened is that at this, at this point, I'm able to export this uh, original key under a different key name in this different file. In other words, I can export a key alias, key alias in a file alias. So let's do it for a couple more for a good manner. So it's a service. So let's generate it as service key. And this one, let's generate it as help key. Naturally, you could continue and do this for all the keys we've just created. And here you, all could, here you also can see that since we've been using clusters to aggregate keys into a single one, it will speed up the process because I don't have to define it for duplicates. Now, before we export this, we have to go to settings one more time. And under the import and export option below the key clustering feature, there is this content generation feature. In here, I'm going to choose to generate key aliases in export file aliases. What that means is that only the keys for which I define both the key alias and export path alias will be generated uh, via CLI or alternatively, alternatively via uh, web upload uh, download section. The export to Figma won't be affected by this because this is configuration only for pre-generated content, which means for CLI and web interface download. However, it will still work as previously for API-based content such as the Figma plugin, which uses our API to fetch all the content. Now, to make sure that this will take effect, I will just reforce publishing to really make sure that the uh, configuration will take effect and the content will be regenerated. Now, I can go to the code, and here, as a developer, after I define the export aliases, I can make use of the content the designers prepared and the translators uh, translated. I have a very simple configuration file here for localizing, and you can see that I actually only have sections related to download. And that's because I really want to emphasize that I shouldn't make any changes or add new keys from the code and Figma should be the source of truth. So I'm only able to download content from localizing. So let's do that. Download. And you can see that it has generated my locales folder with English and German content. And in both of them, you can see that we only have the keys for which we define the aliases. And this is amazing since uh, I'm making use of the content designers prepared. I renamed it to something more readable and I sort, sorted it uh, into a folder that I'm going to use for uh, localization strings. And so this is very convenient to use for everybody involved in the process. And the best part is that what has been designed is going to be used in the production as well, which makes it uh, much more uh, united, united and clearer for everyone. So to summarize, I've, I've, uploaded, I've uploaded content from Figma and into a single file in localize 
which means that designers don't really need to uh, think about it when they do this upload because uh, they don't need to choose a target file and they don't need to rename anything manually. They only upload it and when they want to preview the uh, translated content, they will just make use of the translations defined in localizer. The translators just work on the translations and they uh, they have their work a little bit easier since they don't need to uh, translate duplicates multiple times since they have been aggregating using our clustering feature. The developers, uh, at the same time as the translators do their work, they can sort out and categorize and rename newly ex uh, imported keys and provide export aliases for them so that the keys are more readable and developers can sort the keys wherever they need in the code. When they do that, the developers can make use of uh, the download command to make use of the content that has been uh, defined from Figma and uh, make use of it. So you can see that for the designers, this workflow is seamless as well as for the translators. For the developers, admittedly, this is a little bit of extra work since they need to go to localize and sort the keys and provide uh, export aliases for them. However, in comparison, when they would need to open the Figma file anyway, copy the values, uh, think of where the key belongs and create a key for it. This is, in the end, uh, about the same speed and about the about the same effort. So in the end, it's definitely much easier for almost everybody and most likely also easier for the developers as well. I hope you like this feature and if you if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Bye.